Welcome to my random thoughts. <laughs> okay, the last couple of days I've had, especially while I've been swimming, because when I swim it's like, I swim for a long time back and forth, back and forth, and so my mind just kind of goes in all sorts of directions. And the last couple of days I've had all these thoughts, random thoughts going through my mind, but they all somehow hooked together and became a wonderful, a wonderful theme, a wonderful idea, a wonderful wishful thinking, if only. And, um, you know, I wonder, it makes me wonder, I think that maybe it's God's heart. I think that maybe it really would be his plan if we could all just come into agreement with him and do it. Do his plan. Allow it to happen. And, okay, so let me fill you in. All right, so my first thought, and I've got some pictures here to show you or whatever. The first thing that came to my mind was a phalanx, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but a phalanx <laughs> is... Um, I learned this way back, you know I'm 61, I learned it way back when I was in high school. I think it was a Spartan army. And so I looked it up and I got pictures of it. But the special thing about this army, because the two main cities in, in um, Greece, way, way, way back, were Athens and Sparta, I think. I'm not a history major, okay. And um, Spart Sparta or Spartan, no, I think Sparta, really knew how to win their wars. And the reason why, it's like, it's like they won pretty much every war that they, that they fought. I don't know what was their downfall eventually, but at that time, they, what they did, they had an army that was called a phalanx, and there would be like, groups like there would be this phalanx and then that phalanx and I'm going to show you a picture of one phalanx because well let me describe it first these guys when they did it the way that they were supposed to nobody could come up against them they bulldozed they actually bulldozed <laughs> whoever they came up against because this was them all right let me show you I don't know if you can, can you see? Anyway, here's a close-up view of them. It was like soldiers that were shoulder to shoulder and in perfect formation. And they, it's like, it's like they, with their, with their weapon and shoulder to shoulder, they were like a big, huge bulldozer that would take down anything that was in their way. Okay. So, what I was thinking was, instead of like the weapons, the swords, and I know it sounds like too fairy tale, but it's not. It's not really. But instead of the swords, love. It's like shoulder to shoulder, people just totally shoulder to shoulder with love gluing them together, nothing could, could it, in like a phalanx, and it's like nothing will stop it, right? A phalanx, nothing could stop. And the other thing is, the Bible says that God's love never fails. Now, in this world that we live in today, this is a, a next thought that comes into my mind. <laughs> that came over the days that I was thinking these things. <sighs> the next thought was <clears throat> Las Vegas and the shooting. There was an exceptional kind of love that was working that night that was in complete contrast to the hate that was coming from the, the um, one who was doing the shooting. It was like a, you could see the light and the darkness, the dark, I mean, the light and the darkness and the evil versus the, the pure love. 
The pure love that was seen that night was that people weren't looking at they, they were just loving, they were helping each other without trying to analyze each other, without trying to, to worry about what the person believes, what the person thinks, if the person is black, if the person is white, if the person is gay or straight. People were just helping each other to survive, right? That is love in its purest form. That is not, it's like, it's like, what if we could just accept each other without trying to think, are you a Republican or a Democrat? Are you gay or straight? Are you white or black? Are you Asian? What are you? What if, you, what do you believe? Are you, a, are you an atheist or a Christian? Are you a Muslim or a Buddhist? Who cares? They're a human being. Everybody is a human being. And that's the love that was shown that night, that was in complete contrast to the hatred. And people's lives were saved because of it. Okay, so that was my next thought. Then, <laughs> my next thought was, well, I don't know in what order they came. They were all just random things coming to my mind. Another thought that I had was the transformation that happened in me. And that was about eight years ago, because, you know, it's like, I'm 61, since I was 62, I have been, you know, I allowed, I allowed God into my life when I was 62, and I've, I begged Him to transform me because I was in such a complete mess and it's gradually happened a little bit at a time over the years but it was about eight or nine years ago that a real transformation started to happen and that was when I was at my friend's house and I was all alone and she had this plaque on the wall and the plaque was, I'm going to read it to you. The plaque was of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Well, 4 through the beginning of 8. And it is, it describes love. And so, here I was, a missionary, and, you know, so-called living for the Lord or whatever. But, I read this on her wall and what it described was not what was inside of me not at all so love is patient no I wasn't love is kind at that time in my life I was angry angry all the time angry at everybody I wouldn't show it but on the inside it was like every moment of the day I was just cringing. It's like I was filled with things that shouldn't be there. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked. I was very provoked all the time. I fought my husband tooth and nail at that time in my life. Does not take into account a wrong suffered does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And what happened that day, I was face to face with the truth. I was reading that, and I was honest for the first time, because I had read that over and over, for many years, and it didn't penetrate my heart at all. I just thought, oh, that's good, or whatever. But I, I was not at that, until that moment, I was not face to face with the truth, and I realized my life does not show forth any of those things. On the outside, I try to act like that, but I'm a hypocrite. 
I was a hypocrite in my heart, you know. And I wonder that if I was in a situation in Las Vegas, if I would stop to help anybody, probably not. I was just all for me. So, the thing is, is that when I came face to face with the truth, I asked God, I said, God, please do something, change me. Do a miracle in my heart. I'm not like any of that, but you are, God. Please come into my life and transform me. And so that gradually since then, I have been changing, you know, really. I am a different person than I was nine years ago. I've had more dramatic changes in my life in these nine years than the whole of my life put together. But, so that was that. Then the next thing that came to my mind, if I put it all together, you know, it's like in this day and age, hate is so out there. It's before, every time you look at the news, you can see some form of hate. It's all coming to the surface. It's like the light is getting, the dark is getting darker, but because of that, the light is shining lighter. And you know what? It's time to make a choice. We each have to make a choice. We each have to try to decide we can't just be standbyers. You know why? Because if we just stand by and just veg, you know, just become like a vegetable and let the world happen, and we don't decide what side we're on, if we want the light or the dark, the dark can happen to us without us wanting it. It's like nowadays. You don't know. You could be sitting innocently in a movie theater and a gunman comes in. Or walking the streets or at a concert in Las Vegas or just whatever. So much darkness is out there nowadays, you know. And it's like it's time. It's like the, the line has been drawn in the sand. And we need to make a choice in our heart which side we're on if we're going to be about love or hate, if we're going to be about light or darkness. And so um, anyway, anyway, we can't do it. As, you, as I said before, when I came face to face with the truth, you might be out there saying, none of that love thing describes what I am. I don't feel patient or kind whatever you know all this stuff you might be in the same position that I was nine years ago when you're face to face with the truth and you think it doesn't describe me so you know what all you have to do is be real admit it and say I want to choose the sight the side of love I want to choose the sight side I keep saying sight the side of light and just ask God just to come in, in what, and overtake you and do it in, your, in you. Do it, that he does it. It wasn't me that did it. When I said, I can't, it opened the door. When I said, come, you know, just help me. Overtake me, God, because I'm at the end. I can't do any of that. I cannot. Come in and overtake me. And that's all you have to do. Because the ultimate thing is the phalanx. Let me go back to where I began. The phalanx of shoulder to shoulder love, where we are like the people in Las Vegas that didn't look at the other person judging them or trying to figure them out, but just accepted them the way they were. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something that really, truly happened in my life. 
it's like I honestly can say I'm I'm being really real with you I, I don't have any negative feelings or thoughts towards anybody I mean if the thought might come there for a second but then I just say God overtake me help me I don't I want to truly love the person as they are you know and and just accept everybody as they are and it's like when he overtakes, when he overtakes, it's like you're insulated, you're so filled. It's like I feel so filled with, with his love that when somebody says or does something negative to me, honestly, I'm being really real, it's like water off a duck's back. It doesn't stick to me so that I can just love them in return. And, and I'm not perfect. I still, I mean, I've got a long way to go. I'm just at the beginning of allowing him to take me over. But honestly, his love never fails. And then we can just, just imagine a world where shoulder to shoulder that we're glued together by love. That's going to bulldoze the hate. Anyway, those are my random thoughts for the day. Love you guys. Bye. I turned it off without finishing it. <laughs> and so I'm going to have Jose hook it together because I had this song that God put on my heart that goes with it that really is a prayer for this to happen. So I'm just going to sing it as a prayer, okay? <clears throat> Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love reach this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love. I'm going to do it once more. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love. Now I'm done.